Hey, this is Pidge. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do a quick and dirty tips slash tutorial on POB, so Path of Building. If you're new to the game, you may not have heard of it. Path of Building is a tool that has been made by the community to help people plan their builds. You'll see the term POB thrown around everywhere if you're looking into any sort of POE content. And that is essentially somebody's export of their build. And you use Path of Building to then import that build so you can see what's going on, play about with it and put your own spin on things. It's an absolute godsend and I don't know what I would do without it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is download Path of Building and you want to make sure you download the Community Fork version. I will leave the link down in the description. Here's what the page will look like. And then you want to click this link here to grab the latest release. Once that's installed, you'll be greeted with the main menu and it will be blank. I've got some things going on here. So the first thing you want to do is click on new. And that'll bring up a blank POB. If we jump over to YouTube real quick and look at my latest uh, build guide, and I'll show you what you're looking for when you want to import somebody's build that you find on YouTube, whether it's mine or anybody else's, this will be a common thing. This is what you're looking for. Check down in the description and we have this here, which will be a paste bin. So aura stacking endgame POB, leveling trees, that's a different POB. Uh, we'll just take one of these, copy that, and then back into POB, we want to click on import export, import from website, and paste the link in there. Finally, click import and import again. And that's the entire build now imported from the YouTube guide. Up at the top here, it shows you how many skill points that you have left to spend. And this will assume that you're going to level 100. So you can see here, it thinks I'm level 95 because I have five skill points left to spend. Here, you can see that I am level 95. If you wanted to change that, you could do. And this tells me my class and my ascendancy. Down the left hand side here, we have all of the stats. So our attributes, our uh, damage, and that can be changed with uh, by swapping out your main skill here. So at the moment I've got carrying golem selected. If I was to swap that for zombies, that will show me my zombies DPS. We have our life, our reservation, energy shield, Evasion, armor, block chance, absolutely everything. Resistances, it's all down here on the left hand side. Another thing I find really useful in the tree section here is the ability to duplicate this tree and then make changes without overwriting this tree. So down here in the bottom left, we can see that this is the default tree. If we click on that and manage trees, we click on the default, we can copy it. It'll ask us for a name and save. Now down here, we can select the new tree and you can play about with this as much as you want. Maybe you think, oh, maybe there's a better path in, but I don't want to mess up the, the POB. So you can test that out on here. And if I save that, it won't override. It will just override this new level 70 version, uh, level 80 version, sorry, that we just created. So your default will always be like that. And then your level 80 will have the changes that you made. So I find that very, very useful. And you'll see that typically in YouTube guides that do leveling as well. You know, they'll, they'll sort of have a built-in level 20 tree, 40 tree, 60 tree, all the way through to end game. And this is, uh, this is how they do it essentially. The last thing on here that I find extremely useful is the show node power button, especially when planning a build. If I was to remove, say, uh, all of this back, there, so it looks like that. So I'm, I'm quite early game here and my main skill is carrying golems. If I now click on the show node power button, it will analyze the entire tree and it will highlight 
the nodes that are best for what you've selected here. So in this case, it's offense and defense. It'll show the defensive ones and the most powerful defensive ones in blue, and it'll show the most offensive ones in red. You can see these starting to pop up. This may take a little while. So we can ignore the fact that I have my clusters in the build here because it's, it's recommending those. That's quite obvious. But if we look at just tree nodes here, it's highlighting this one here, which is Enduring Bond. So that is a minion node. And if you scan down that, I can't do it without without the um, without it going off. But if you scan down that, it actually shows you a total DPS. And to the right of that, it says how much DPS per point. So if you need to pass sort of nine points, it'll do that average, and, and you can decide whether it's worth pathing to that node or not. Up here, it's also su suggesting influence, and that's going to buff all the auras that I currently have on. Over here, the same thing with Sovereignty. So it's just a really easy way of analysing potentially which path you should take and give you different options. Down here, Grave Pact, highlighted in red. So this is a great option for minions. And I just, I just find this extremely useful. Tick it off, it's all gone. That's in the Tree section. In the Skills section, it's going to show us what skills we have slotted in and in what pieces of gear. This is really useful if you wanted to test if another skill gem may be more powerful than the ones that are being suggested. So for example, if I go into my uh, Carrion Golem 6 link here, make sure you've got these boxes uh, ticked. So sort gems by DPS and combine DPS. You can set here which level they'll be imported at here. I've got all of mine at 2020, so I'm gonna keep it at 2020. And if I just click into this box at the bottom here as if I'm adding a seventh link, it will suggest to me the skill gems or the support gems that are going to give me the most DPS. So if I select damage on full life, my DPS has gone to 2.3 million. And what you can test now is by ticking off one of these support gems and leaving this seventh one on. So that would be 1.598. That would be 1.658. So it would be better to lose this one than that one. But ultimately, this is 1.7. So this is my best six link, but that's a way that you can test. You can also do other useful things like testing how beneficial it is for you to get a level 21 version of a gem or quality 23 of a gem. And then you can decide whether it's worth the value. So here are the carrying golems. If I got a level 21 carrying golem, my DPS goes from 1722 to 1883, so a decent chunk. And if we get, say, 23% on my melee fizz, I can see that it hardly moves. So if, if these two were the same price, say a 23 quality melee fizz or a level 21 carrying golem, I know that getting a level 21 carrying golem is more beneficial to my build and it's more value. So that's some cool things you can do here. Now the item section, there's a lot going on. Uh, these are all the items that are currently in the POB that you've imported. And this is this is a great section that you can test different items. I think one of the big things as you're playing through, and one thing you may not know that you can do, is straight from the trade site, you can actually import a new item into here, and then you can test whether it's going to be better than what you currently have. And that's a really simple thing to do. First, before we do that, we'll look over some uniques. So if you want to just test if a unique is going to be better than maybe a rare that you have, then you can put it here in this unique search bar and search for example, Hungry Loop. We already have one, but let's do this. And then you would just click add to build. If there are variables in the item, so let's go for something like a Shavs, shall Chevron Wrappings, then it will give the option here to set that. So you can set that slider and that is on the fly, it's changing these, um, uh, the modifiers here. When you add that to build, you can actually then select it. It knows that it's a body armor, so you can select it now as a body armor. You can easily check improvements there on variables on uniques. 
But what you can do is actually pull something from the trade website directly into here so it could be a rare. You may be looking at a rare and thinking, oh, well, that stat's better than mine, but that stat's worse than mine. Is that going to be a net profit for me? You can easily test that. So we'll hop over to the trade website really quick and we'll do a really sort of brash example of what this what this may look like. Uh, we'll choose some gloves. So for example, let's say you're looking for some uh, gloves with energy shield. I just typed in these two modifiers on gloves, search for those, and we will just select any at random here. And all you want to be looking for is this, this little plus icon here in the bottom left of the item. If you click on that, and then we move back over to the POB, and we click on create custom, paste in there, so control V to paste all of the information in there. These are called blight hand gloves, create, add to build, and then in our glove section here, we can actually choose those blight hand gloves. And then you can decide whether those are a better pair of gloves than the ones that you had on. So that is extremely useful, especially when, when you're looking for something really specific and you think, yeah, I mean, they're better on resistances, but am I going to lose a lot of DPS? You can very quickly plug that into the POB and do a, a straight comparison. The other feature that I use quite a bit in the items section is managing a set of items. So here, this, this will be a pretty standard um, aura stacking minion build uh, loadout for me. But what if I wanted to look at this on, say, SSF gear? Up here at the top, we can actually click on manage. And you can save any of these loadouts to be global which means I could then import that into any other build. I've already done that here, so I have blank necro. This is just sort of a thrown together SSF, really bad example actually, of an SSF um, minion build. So if I drag that in here, and it works the other way, so if I want to make um, this current loadout here, this default one, global, I could drag that to the right, rename it, click on done, and then this will be made available as a loadout in any POB that I put in. So I've brought the uh, blank necro in now, click on done, and at the top I can actually choose blank necro. And that's changed my entire loadout. You can see what that does to your, your DPS and your defenses and everything that you have on. I, I just find that really useful, especially when creating leveling guides. Okay, the last section on here is the calc section, and this is quite a big one. So in the calc section, um, there's going to be some minion specific things here. Quite a few people enjoy playing minions and there are some things that are specific to them. And that is mainly this box here. So I'll untick that for now. If you want to look at what damage and attack speed and crit chance and all that stuff of your minions and the, uh, let's say the life of your minions and resistances, then you would have to make sure that your socket group here contains your minion links and then make sure your active skill, if there are multiples in that link, is the skill that you're looking for. So here I've got carrying golems. Um, there is only one active skill in that sixth link. So if I tick this box, that changes all of these stats from looking at me to looking at my minions. And that's really important. It does more than just that. So now you can look at the life of your minions, the effective health pool, uh, what defense it's got against elemental attacks, and what resistances they have here um, and what other avoidance they have. So you, here you can see the shock, freeze, chill, ignite, immune, uh, all of that good stuff. Uh, this is a fantastic screen for you to really get some uh, really deep dive into what's going on. If I untick that, all of these stats now are for me. So here is my effective hit pull, my uh, maximum hit taken, etc, etc, not my minions. This also feeds over into the configuration tab. Here is where you can set auras to like count towards your DPS or not. Um, really specific things like, do you have a flask active? Um, how many minions do you have summoned? Things that the POB doesn't know, and you can tell it specifically. Here we have um, Shaper and Guardian ticked. This massively changes your DPS. So if I put that to no, so here's just mapping. You'll see that that added like three, four hundred thousand DPS per golem. So we always set that to Shaper Guardian if we're doing an endgame build, and that's it, it's just more accepted. 
that these are the numbers that should be comparable. But you'll see here we have certain things relating to minions. So do your minions use power charges? Yes. Do they use frenzy charges? Yes. If you are missing these and you and you are looking for them, it's because you don't have your minion skill selected here. So if I change that to flame dash, they've gone. So always make sure that you're looking at your uh, main skill over here on the left hand side and you can see now that they show up. So that's just a little tip if you if you are struggling to find these uh, particular checkboxes. Configuration you can pretty much get lost in, you know, you, you really just uh, hover over and it will tell you what they do and if they're applicable to you you can tick them on and if not you can tick them off. Finally when you've finished you have the option to export and this will take everything so the same way that you imported the export will condense all of this into a paste bin link and it will contain your skills, your items, your tree, your configuration, everything. And here you just do it the other way around. So you click on generate and then share with paste bin. And there's a link, you can just click copy here and that's ready to paste. So you, you can give that to a friend now. You could just control V or paste and give that to a friend. Okay, I hope that was a really useful, quick and dirty. I wanted to make it as simple as possible and just and just do a fly through. Really, you just need to, to pop in here and actually spend some time and have a read around yourself. Play about with some different POBs and try and understand why they've made the decisions that they've made. You may think on the face of it that, oh, they definitely should have gone for that node, but then what you can do here is you can keep their POB exactly the same, make a copy, make those changes, and then maybe understand why it is they didn't go that way. Or maybe they should have gone that way and they've just overlooked it. This is a great way to learn, a fantastic tool and one that you will use pretty much every day as you're playing PoE, once you get used to it. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, throw me a like, subscribe to the channel. I'm hoping to do some more of these quick and dirty tips in the future and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.